Hi guys, it is a dark and stormy night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the waning twilight before the big one hits in about an hour. Good lord here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes of New York. It is uh, Wednesday night. July 7th, 2021, and we're not even going to talk about my day. Oh, yes, but other than mentioning, uh, I do want, before I get into my rant, I really do want to send out a big thank you for the 10 people out of the 500 people who have viewed uh, the video I made about... Uh, Sancho Panza's latest GoFundMe challenge to try to replace the kitchen uh, in the hip camp here at Bugs in a Jar Farm that was smashed and destroyed by a, uh, a severe thunderstorm yesterday. Uh, so out of the 500 people who viewed it, I really want to send out a huge thank you to the 10 people who uh, were very kind enough to send in a donation to uh, help us rebuild our kitchen at the hip camp. And uh, so we are at $375. And I do really, really appreciate I know a lot of you are said, don't mention my name. So I'm just going to send out a big thank you to all 10 of you. And uh, if anybody wants to help your old climate refugee uh, dig his way out of this latest climate catastrophe from this severe thunderstorm, I will put the link to Sancho's GoFundMe. Uh, can I just click on the link, and it's real easy. And uh, I really appreciate any support along those lines for anyone who appreciates what I do here, uh, whatever it is that I do here, and wants to say thank you, maybe a few dollars would be a nice way to do that, but enough begging. We're going, uh, <laughs> that uh, a segue, I, I, I like this, uh, I think that was a perfect segue into this article uh, from a fellow, I think that Ben, I don't know if you guys remember Ben, he was this young man who was supposed to take over the interviews uh, here at Collapse Chronicles. I think Ben bit off a little more than he could chew and has found out it, it's not quite that easy to, uh, but anyway, uh, we wish Ben luck and maybe he will... Uh, grace us with another interview. I think that Peter Gleick, climatologist Peter G-L-E-I-C-K, was one of the people he was hoping to interview. But we're going to go over to the Guardian today where Peter Gleick, if that's how you pronounce this man's name, uh, has, a, uh, has an article out on today's Guardian looking ahead at uh, figuring out the what's coming up in the next few years. Take it away, Peter. The climate crisis will create two classes, those who can flee and those who cannot. Yeah, so two classes of people, those who can get the hell out of Dodge and those who can't. Although, you know, so I guess this morning, I, you know, I am, a, I am a climate refugee from the state of Texas because I sold my, I, I can afford to flee Texas. And so, of course, on the, uh, uh, let's see, so the day that a severe thunderstorm was, uh, was crashing and killing uh, my hip camp, tent in New York, I guess a hurricane was smashing in to uh, my property in Florida, 
I don't think, I haven't heard any reports of any damages from there. So your old climate refugee, instead of having a property in one state to be uh, hit by, you know, the climate crisis, I have two of them. That's what I got by being a climate refugee, but no one wants to hear about me. We want to hear what Peter has to say about it. So take it away, Peter. We seem to have a cat yowling. What's your problem, cat? No, I'm, I'm having a video. I can't come rescue you. <clears throat> anyway, a few years ago, after I gave a talk on water and climate change, I had an Arizona rancher come up and ask me if there would be enough water in the future for their livestock or if they should sell out and move north. This week, I received an email from a retiring doctor who acknowledging both their privileged economic situation and the personal nature of the decision nevertheless asked if it would, quoting his email, would be more advantageous and safe to consider moving to coastal Oregon or Washington rather than staying in Southern California, close quote, because of rising seas, extreme heat, and the growing threat of wildfires. At an Independence Day party this weekend, a couple asked me if they should move from Colorado to Michigan because of growing drought and water shortages in the western U.S. and uh, I receive emails all the time from uh, folks asking me my advice on this and uh, my advice is to move to upstate New York. We would love to have you guys move up here. We're actually developing quite the unintentional doomer community around here but of course if you come up here you can expect to as we're going to see in about an hour get slammed uh, by a severe thunderstorm, tornadoes. I was just talking to Brother Basil about my, uh, about, you know, my outdoor kitchen. And, uh, you know, he was just saying, uh, Sam, you know, the, the days of temporary structures are gone. Same thing that uh, somebody else was telling me. Uh, e e even here in, in, uh, calcium upstate New York. From here on out, get you some damn uh, big lumber and tin roofs. Your little screen house. Forget it. But anyway, getting back to Peter, <clears throat> after I have another sip of my collapse Rita, this is my amazing woman. Uh, cup that I bought for some amazing woman who, uh, anyway, we're not going to start that on this channel. Uh, anyway, enough of the amazing woman in my life or not in my life. Back to Peter. I get these questions regularly and am both encouraged and dismayed by them. Encouraged because it suggests that the message about climate risks is finally getting out and people are beginning to reflect on the personal implications of those risks. Dismayed by the realization that the climate crisis is going to produce two classes of refugees. Those with the freedom and financial resources to try, to try for a while at least, to flee from growing threats in advance and those who will be left behind to suffer the consequences in the form of illness, death, and destruction. Anyone who wants to see a, an example of destruction, look at my video I posted yesterday about my collapsed kitchen. And I cannot answer them. Decisions about where to live when we are lucky enough to have the ability to choose are deeply personal 
a function of family, friends, jobs, wealth, and idiosyncratic preferences about community, can you say this little group of doomers that we're building around here, we would absolutely love. I mean, seriously, guys, uh, if you want to join our little unintentional community of doomers in about a two-hour radius of the Finger Lakes, all joking aside, send me an email to collapsechronicles at gmail.com and we'll talk about it about our idiosyncratic preferences about community, health, environment, and yes, climate and weather. But from the point of view of a scientist, certain facts about our changing environment are now glaring, glaringly unambiguous. Sea levels are rising and risks from coastal flooding and storms already extremely high in some places are growing fast. Rising temperatures are already causing more extreme heat events which have always been lethal and are becoming more so. Well, of course, people used to think about moving to the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia to uh, get away from the heat in Southern California. Well, the joke's on them, I, I guess. Uh, anybody who, who moved to the Pacific Northwest thinking they were escaping summer heat waves Anyway, yes. Rising temperatures it, are already causing more extreme heat events, which have always been lethal and are becoming more so. And don't forget, wildfires are increasing in frequency, intensity, and duration in many parts of the world, threatening communities with death and destruction and causing severe air pollution for millions, and uh, as I might have mentioned before, the reason I ended up up here in upstate New York and the Finger Lakes of New York is for, was it three or four summers that Sancho and I, the, my plan was when I, uh, you know, when I hit 60 years old that I was going to flee Texas and move to the Pacific Northwest. But I, I guess it was three summers that Sancho and I spent out there looking for the place we were going to be climate refugees to. And every summer we got uh, run out by the wildfire smoke. Just the smoke. I'm talking about just the air pollution. It is an absolute bummer why anybody, I mean, not even counting uh, this heat wave from this week in the Pacific Northwest, why anybody uh, would be talking about moving, you know, from a point, from, you know, from San Francisco to Vancouver to get away from climate change. You know, so it was Sandy, you know, Sandy Shellis who convinced me uh, three years ago to come up here to New York and so I followed her advice. Uh, I think right the day I got here her house was hit by a tornado and uh, here I am uh, on GoFundMe trying to rebuild my kitchen from a, th a thunderstorm. Anyway, back to Peter. I keep drifting off. Probably has something to do with my amazing woman Margarita here. The severity of both droughts and floods are on the rise in some regions, such as like right out my door, with consequences for water availability and quality and public health. Now, anybody uh, worried about water availability, I really will say the Finger Lakes of New York, it, there, there is no way I'm going to die of thirst at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Good Lord. I've got the creek. I've got two ponds. I've, I've got these gorgeous springs. I mean, everywhere I turn here, there is fresh water. Uh, so if you are worried about water availability, I highly recommend the Finger Lakes of New York. 
Worldwide, nearly 700 million people now live in low-lying coastal zones vulnerable to sea level rise and coastal storms. That number could reach a billion by 2050. Island nations like the Maldives, Seychelles, Kribati, and others could be completely wiped out by rising seas and storms, you know, over the next 30 years. Even a rise of only one meter, otherwise known as 39 inches, almost certainly unavoidable now, will displace millions of people in Florida and along the Gulf Coast you know, of the U.S. alone, causing trillions of dollars in damages and property loss. So this is climatologist Peter Gleick making the prediction that in the next 29 years, uh, millions of people in Florida and along the U.S. Gulf Coast will be displaced, will have to move, and we will be seeing trillions of dollars in damages and property loss. You did not hear that from me. That was from Peter but uh, he's the climatologist, I'm not. All right, the unprecedented heat waves sweeping over the planet recently are harbingers of the heat waves of the future. And I, right here on the mainstream media, they just announced that June, obviously, uh, was the hottest June on record, which, will be the truth until the June of 2022 is what that article was predicting and that will hold the record for the hottest June till you know June of 2023 but anyway back to Peter temperatures above 49 degrees C otherwise known as 120 degrees Fahrenheit swept over the Middle East a few weeks ago earlier than ever before Death Valley hit 53.3 C, otherwise known as 128 degrees Fahrenheit, just shy of the hottest temperature recorded on Earth. Last week, the small town of Lytton, British Columbia, saw the highest temperature ever recorded in Canada and then was wiped out. Have you seen those pictures of Lytton, uh, British Columbia, what was it, a day or two after recording the highest temperature ever in the history of Canada was wiped out by a brutal and fast moving wildfire. And don't forget the World Meteorological Organization just this week confirmed a new record high temperature for the Antarctic. Yes. <clears throat> the U.S. National Climate Assessment noted that the period since 1950 in the southwestern U.S. has been hotter than any comparable period in the last 600 years and temperatures continue to rise. Heat stress is already the leading weather-related cause of death in the United States, worse than hurricanes, tornadoes, or floods. In Europe, more than 20,000 people, mostly elderly, are already estimated to die annually from exposure to extreme heat. This problem, well, obviously, Peter, is most severe in poorer communities that, lo that lack shade trees, air conditioning, and cooling shelters. Mm. Every one of these changes shows the fingerprints of human-caused climate change. In response, humans that can move will move. 
just as millions migrated over the past century from the colder north to sunny warm communities in Florida, Arizona, New Mexico, and Southern California, we will certainly see a massive reverse migration in the coming half century away from the coast, extreme heat and water shortages to places thought to be more favorable. And, and I have been talking about this, I've been making this prediction for years that what is going on with, with, with more and more stories coming out like this. So what do you think last year, 2020? What state lost the most population? Uh, what state had more people migrate out of it than any state in the country? It would be New York lost the most population. While, take a wild guess, the two states that gained the most population, Texas. 375,000 clueless morons moved to Texas last year while I was moving away from Texas heading north there were 375,000 people moving into Texas in 2020 and 241,000 people moving to Florida. Thank you Peter Gleick. Obviously Peter Gleick listens to Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles to understand that you are going to see a reverse migration uh, when people understand that you might not want to be moving to Texas and Florida. Of course, you know, I'm a snowbird who spends half a year in Florida. I don't have any room to talk. All right. Uh, we are already seeing refugees on the southern border of the U.S. fleeing countries suffering from drought and disasters. If greenhouse gas emissions continue unabated, and I would add, if greenhouse gas emissions do not continue, whether or not greenhouse gas emissions continue unabated, some models suggest that more than a million climate refugees may move from Central America and Mexico to the United States. That more than a million, how about a 30 million? Anyway, in April, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees released a report showing that climate and weather related disasters already displace more than 20 million people per year and a report from the Australian Institute for Economics and Peace suggests that more than a billion people could be displaced by climate and weather disasters by 2050. How bad will it get? Okay, this is the final uh, paragraph from Peter's essay. How bad will it get? I don't know because I don't know how long our politicians will dither before finally dealing with the climate crisis. I don't know because there are natural factors that could slightly slow or more likely massively speed up the rate of change causing cascading and accelerating disasters faster than we can adapt. But we know enough now to invest in reducing the emissions of climate changing gases and to begin to adapt to those impacts we can no longer avoid. These changes are coming and the costs, especially to those left behind, will be anything our will be beyond anything our disaster management systems have had to deal with in the past. So uh, who exactly is uh, Peter? Peter Gleick is the co-founder of the Pacific Institute, a hydrologist and climatologist and a member of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences. Uh, 
He lives about 30 meters above sea level, but only 900 meters away from an extremely dangerous earthquake fault. <laughs> yep, we all have our blind spots, Peter. But anyway, let's all thank Peter Gleick for uh, not spinning much hopium here. Uh, it is nice to see that a few climatologists and hydrologists are, are not mentioning the word about this a window of opportunity. Uh, thank you, Peter, for being honest enough to let, let us know we're doomed. And uh, seriously, folks, uh, if you would like to move up here to the Finger Lakes and join our a little unintentional community of doomers. It really is time to be, be thinking this out. Our idiosyncratic, whatever it was, <laughs> ideas about community. So get out there and enjoy your community while you still can. And I have to and uh, enjoy my electricity before this severe thunderstorm kicks my ass in about 30 minutes and probably shuts my power and the internet down. Yes, little dog. Are you ready for me to stop ranting so you can go to bed? One more time, we do appreciate any, uh, any donations to Sancho's GoFundMe challenge to rebuild our crashed kitchen. Bye guys. Yes little dog. We're done. <laughs>